My name is Brian and I'm 70 years old and I've had Parkinson's for 11 years. That's more than you probably wanted to know. And where do you live, Brian? So I currently live in London. I grew up in the north of England, but moved to Silicon Valley when I married an American. And um, we're currently back in London. And um, when, when did you first notice that you had Parkinson's? So I was dining out with some clients and I couldn't put my jacket on when it was time to leave. The waiter had to come over and help me. And I thought, gee, maybe I've had a stroke or something's gone, not going well here. So I um, went to the doctor, got bumped up to a neurologist, and he gleefully said, I'm 110% certain you have Parkinson's. Here's some pills now, go away. <laughs> So how have your symptoms progressed in those 11 years since you've had the disease? So initially it was very slow. Um, I rarely took Cinemet, didn't find it made any difference. In the past several years, I'm now on four a day and um, things are starting to go the wrong direction. So my handwriting is getting really awkward. I'm having a lot of trouble typing, which I know there are these speech to text applications, but they often miss a few words and the pain of going back to correct that is just like, I don't, I can't deal with it. So what's the, what's the worst thing about Parkinson's for you? So probably fatigue. Right now I'm not tired, but oftentimes during the day, it's like I'll take a nap or just have to sit down. It's a great way to avoid doing dishes and <laughs> yard work and other things like that. And are there any positives to having Parkinson's? Anything that's changed in your life to, for the better? So you meet a lot of interesting people. We came to London to help our daughter with her kids and um, initially you'd think, how would you meet people when you move to a new town? Well, if you have something like Parkinson's, <laughs> you get to meet a lot of interesting people that share the same, same issue you have. And do you have an interesting story about what might have caused your Parkinson's? Can you explain that? Yeah, so it kind of frustrates me that no one ever asks, why do you how do you think you got Parkinson's when you go in for your... Um, doctor visit. And in my case, I worked in Silicon Valley. I worked in a lab that had big baths of trichloroethylene, which were doing reliability testing of silicon wafers and all that. And these baths were just open liquid. We had no clue that that could be a precursor to Parkinson's. So this was back in the early 70s. So in those 30 years or so, um, something was going on between the chemical I inhaled and uh, my brain malfunctioning. Final question, what advice would you give to someone sort of recently diagnosed with Parkinson's? You really have to not get overwhelmed. There's so much information out on the internet, you can drive yourself crazy by seeing different scenarios. In general, just read up a little, start an exercise program. Everybody knows exercise, diet and nutrition. And uh, my secret weapon is um, an amino acid I discovered called Laffodopa. Immerse yourself in comedy, have a good laugh, <laughs> and you completely forget about Parkinson's for the several hours you're watching Monty Python or whatever your uh, chosen funny person or act is. If you're interested in finding out more about Parkinson's, subscribe for a new video every Thursday.